Hello and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and for another episode, an exciting episode, well maybe not so exciting episode, of building the station so shields. And um, as you can see we have the name board up. Now can you guess where it is on the layout? It's right next door to the Jensen luggage room and what we're going to be looking at this time um, here is a replica of this building but at the other end of the station to make it complete as you can see there's nothing at that end yet it's just an empty space so let's go and have a look shall we so that's where we were last week. We were in the booking office getting a ticket. And this is what we're going to be doing this week. I've made a little start. Um, this is the wall that's going to go here. And with the large opening like that for the doors going into the goods side of the station. Now this building here I'm presuming it was a large waiting room come refreshments room and then round the corner from this it's not there yet you're gonna to have to use a little bit of imagination was the barbers and the telephone uh, room. So Let's go and have a look at some photographs. Right, so here's the building here we're going to be looking into. As you can see, it's got the three windows, the door, and then another window. So, so that this bit is correct. And then we offset it here, and then there's a wall, then a door, then a wall, and then two windows, and another wall. So I have condensed this end of the building a little bit but keeping all the details um, the only bit I'm going to lose is about a hundred mils worth of wall right here we have an interesting photograph we're looking north this time on the same building and as you can see here we have a barber's a telephone room the ticket inspector's hut and obviously there's the footbridge and there's and if you look closely you can see that the building is bending there and it's following the arch of the roof there so I've got to build that building slightly curved to marry up with the rest of the platform And here in this photograph you can see the two windows and you can make out here the pillar at the end of the building here which would have took the oval roof. You could just about make out the signal box here. So in the model that I'm making we're going to lose this wall. So this pillar will become here. And just Beyond these two windows here will be the door to the left. Now this is all because of restrictions on the platform because I want to leave a little bit of a gap for this signal box you can just make out here in the corner. So as you can see I've lined up the rule with the edge of the existing building here and straightened it up. Laid out the brick wall here as you can see I've only got about 70 mil before I actually touch the signal box which is represented by that um, load there so this is why we had to lose the 100 millimeters worth of wall because there was a, a wall then the door then the windows and then the wall again so I just thought I'd quickly show you that before we continue. Anyway, so we have the first wall done. Um, 
it's, it's not um, fully detailed yet um, it still needs stiffening card on the back and it still needs to be detailed on this side as well so let's crack on so this is the end wall we're going to focus on and here is the end wall it's been marked out and I've actually cut it as well but I'm not going to throw these away because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these for reinforcement for the roofs so what I'll do is I'll glue them and because they're the same shape they'll just fit straight back in there like so so this would be the end wall where the barbers and the telephone box is and this is the adjoining building right so I have marked this out to the little sketch here but if you've noticed on this little sketch there's a little tiny drinks water fountain um, it must have been for the kids um, I've made a drawing of it here I'm going to see if I can make that at some point uh, it's going to be tiny but uh, it's a challenge and I do like challenges and obviously you've got the barber's scroll to make which I'm going to hang just here on this between the door and the window just like you saw in the photograph right so what I'll do now is I'll continue this cut it brick it out and put the doors in right as you can see I have cut out for the doors and window now there is a little bit of slack in them that's to allow for the card um, you've seen this many a times before in previous videos but this one here is probably the only door which is open on the platform and it happens to be the barbers all the other doors are closed so uh, I just thought I'd mention that so I'll just carry on and break this up right when making something as big as this um, you've always got to allow for overlaps and joining of cards uh, like for instance this end wall um, on the platform I've got the main station now the main station building will be coming up and gluing onto that there which would give it a nice butt joint for the glue um, so yeah you've got to allow for things like that and like for instance card overlaps that there will hide the joint on the end of here right I have glued the card sheeting onto the back uh, sidewall and as you can see it's a perfectly good joint and it should more or less stand on its own without any glue now the back wall I've cut this three millimeters longer than the front wall the re reason being is the front wall, wall is curving and obviously if it's curving the inside radius will always be smaller than the outside radius so with this being just that couple of millimeters longer should take up any difference um, regarding the bend um, the back wall here will have two windows in it one there and one there both together and the card will come so far then it'll stop because there's another building situated here which we'll go on to in another video right so now we're just going to carry out a quick site survey to see how all these bits and pieces come together that goes there that goes on there like that this wall will sit on the platform
like so, and then this card will go in there to form the back wall. And now you get the picture of what it's going to look like. As you can see, we've got the main building running right through to about here. And then there's another little building which sits on the front. Um, this is why I had to do a little side survey to make sure I can get two sets of windows in. The pair here on the building that we're working on and another pair of windows here. Um, I don't know if you've been following the videos but uh, I think in the last video I showed you a photograph of the station showing all three end buildings at this angle. One, two and the third one which we haven't started yet. Right, as you can see I've got the uh, the gents back on the bench. It's just so I can copy some of the details that I've made on these walls here so I can copy them across onto this wall because it's, it's virtually identical but in a mirror image um, so that's why that's there so at the moment I'm just wrapping the card around the pillar here which is as you can see it's five strips of 10 mil by 2 mil card stuck together and once this is wrapped around it will form the pillar like we have on this building here so it's always handy to go over what you've done if you've got the template to do so because it's alright me having the drawings but little details like that I have not put on the drawings if that makes sense. What I'm going to do now is glue these walls all together and they're all prepped and ready. I've um, got the back wall here as well and uh, I've got an intermediate piece which goes in there. So if I glue it all on site and then it should be square to the platform and the baseboard here. So the first bit I want to start with is the main end wall. So that's that corner glued together. I just want to press it home. Just make sure I've got the edges good. There is a little bit of glue going onto the platform, but that will wash off. And I've got the back wall to go in here. And then I've got the mid roof section to go in there. It's the four walls glued together over here, so that's that's done. I'm quite happy with that. But if you have a look now at the overall picture of the station, it measures just over 1.5 meters. Right, so the next thing is I've got to strengthen this building up. Right, here's an old photograph of South Shield Station and as you can see there is the plinth there. And it goes around the whole building. I just thought I'd show you that. Right, so what I'm going to do now, moving away from the plinths, um, I can't do this plinth because I haven't got the wall in for the ramp going down to these doors. 
So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to make, make the wall, put it in there and put a ramp in. And then we can continue with putting the um, plinths in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've already cut the wall to go inside. Inside there, so I've already cut the wall. And I've got my piece of card cut, so I'm just going to score it and paint it in a concrete colour before I stick it in. And I'm just putting these ribs in. Now on certain ramps, they put ribs in to stop the trolleys running away when you're pushing them up and down ramps. So I'm just going to continue with this, paint it up, and then we'll um, fit it into the, the hallway as it were. I made my little ramp. I have stuck it to the inner wall where so it makes it a lot easier to fit and I'll put a little bit of strengthener underneath. So that should then just drop in there. So he says. And once it's glued, I have the ramp for the parcels. Oops. Now that we have the ramp installed, um, as you can see I've put a brick wall and a black border there and uh, it, looks, it looks quite neat. Anyway so now that that's done we can concentrate on putting the brick plinths along and finish that off and then I can get back to the other build. So yeah, that's not a bad, uh, I don't know, he can't wait to blink and use it, look. Car's only been in literally two seconds. Oh, well, someone's got to try it out. Right, I shall continue. Okay, what we're going to focus on now is these three chimney pots. One, two, three. And work out where they go on the model. Right, so here we are again making chimneys. As you saw in the drawing, I've made one chimney already. This one will go on the end of the wall, like so. So that one go there once it's got its brick paper on. And the other two I've already marked out one there and one there. So this chimney here is going to be the hollow one which I'll be able to feed cables through. So I'll just glue it together and then we'll have a look.
Now as you can see that's the trunking that's going to actually hold the cables in. Right, so the cables will go down through there and then through the bottom here. And that's the chimney for the cables to hide in. Okay, I've now done my three chimneys. Um, the two here matches the slope in the ridge of the roof. Um, this is the hollow one like a, we made earlier uh, and this one's just a basic straight up and down chimney nice and easy so that's the easy bit out of the way so we'll put them to one side next thing we need to concentrate on is how I divide this up into rooms right as you can see I have now divided it up into three rooms we have the barbers the telephone room or the telecommunications room which may have been in them days and here we have the waiting room come uh, refreshments room this is just temporary um, this is a little sneaky preview into how I'm gonna do the oval roof um, just as you come onto the platform just by using card and making um, A-frames like this. Right, I've kind of deviated from making the chimneys for a moment. I've um, decided to concentrate on detailing the barbers. Uh, I think we all need a, a haircut at the moment, so I thought I'd do that. Anyway, I've made the floor. It's just a checkered tiled floor. I've just painted it white, gloss white, and then marked out for the tiles and just scored a few lines across the other tiles there, just to give it a checky effect. So that will just sit in here underneath there. And you notice stuff got a notch in there ready, that's for the chimney. Right, the other thing I've done is I've made this fascia. out of the scrap cards that's lying about. I've got plenty of card lying about. Um, obviously I'm going to paint this a wooden effect so I'll be painting it, mixing a few yellows and browns up to get a nice oaky feel to it. And then I'm going to put two mirrors in there. And then that'll go against the back wall. Um, yeah. It's off centre because there's a chimney here. So I've made it off-center a little bit. And here is that uh, piece of um, furniture painted. It kind of looks like a really dark brown, ready walnut color. Um, so once it's dried, I'll give it a coat of varnish and then see what happens to it then. And it's just a case of adding the two mirrors. Um, I haven't got any sizes for this, I just kind of uh, made it up as I went along. But I did look at some photos earlier of what the uh, inside of an old barber's looked like. So that's what that is at the moment, that's the background which I'm going to pin the two mirrors on. Right, as you can see the wood panelling has had a gl glossy coat added, so that's giving it a little bit of a sheen. And I've also added a mirror. Uh, it's not a particularly good mirror, but it's a little bit of tin foil just to represent a mirror. So when that's stuck into the room, it'll give uh, an effect of um, looking like a barber's. I'd like to think so. So let's have a look, shall we? Right, so this is what it looks like inside the barber's. Um, I've painted yellow walls and it's got like a light 
blue border along the bottom and with the tiled flooring in it's looking quite effective right as well as the bucket I have added a, a station Victorian clock so if we just zoom in a little bit we might just be able to catch a glimpse of it just let it come into focus there And these are the clocks there, Victorian station clocks. Can't quite pronounce the name. Auschhogen. Auschhogen. Uh, yep, yeah, well, I got them off of uh, eBay. I'm going to do one more thing so we don't have to visit the barbers again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a chair for the barbers. So I've got my little figure here, uh, so I'm just measuring the width of his body, which is roughly about 6 millimeters. we'll call it 7 because the chairs are quite big, and it's 10 mil up to his head, and it's about 6 mil down to, the, to his feet. So uh, let's, let's, let's just measure that. Yeah, that's about right. So what I'll do is, I'll make him a chair. Now we know that barber chairs can be quite big and chunky. So I'm just going to cut this bit of plastic card to make the basis of the seat. do is we'll fold it to go around the figure. If it'll let me fold it without snapping. Now this piece of plastic card's uh, one millimeter thick so it should be okay. Yeah, as you probably guessed, it has snapped, so I've glued it back together and I've stuck a little bit on the bottom. And uh, I'll, do, I'll cut another little bit off and so he can put his feet on it, just to go along the bottom there. So I'll just uh, chop a little bit off there. Right, now that I've got the basic shape for the seat and the footrest, now's the time to cut it to make the headrest. So I'm just going to sit the figure back in there. Work out where his head is. And then just cut around his head just to make a little headrest okay so this little seat fits the guy pretty neat so all it needs now is a couple of armrests and a stand for the seat to sit at an angle ready for the barber to trim his hair So I've been looking through my come and handy box and we've all got bits of plastic and odd ends of kits and bits and pieces and um, so I've got a manhole cover there off an old um, wheels kit and a little bit of plastic and I've made a base for the seat as you can see there and here it is 
if I can just show you that there it is a little tiny thing seven millimeters wide and it stands roughly about 22 millimeters off the floor to the top of the headrest and uh, I'm just using that figure to get all the dimensions for the chair and he sits in there quite nicely and it doesn't fall over so it's nicely balanced as you can see so the next thing to do is to make up some armrests which I'll just curve a little bit of polyurethane strip and I'll just put that on there one either side and then that'll finish it off ready for painting so what I've done is I've stuck the guy back in the chair and I've just marked on the chair where the top of his elbow is on both sides so I know where to put the armrests right as you can see I've added the armrests and if I just spin the chair around without knocking it over you can see the little foot pump there that used to um, hydraulically push the chair up and down so I'm finished with that I'm happy with that in all respects I just need to paint it right and here's the gentleman waiting for his haircut as you can see the chair is painted and it's all finished ready to go to sit in the barbers I now do declare the barbers open so who wants a short back and sides So now you know why I wanted a door to be open at the barbers so we can see what's going on. You can see through the window and you can actually see all the little details. The barber, the punter and you can actually see what time it is and it's 5 to 11 by that clock. So we have the barbers open at the station but we don't have the station open if that makes sense so that's not a bad week's work this week getting that building done there's still the other two rooms the uh, refreshment room and the telephone room down in there I'll tell you what if you look close at that mirror you can actually see a reflection just about anyway right so what else have we done we have completed the ramp so the parcels office uh, won't be long to be opening I don't think and uh, we've completed the sign for sour shields at the other end If I pan back, you get a, a better view of the whole station. Right, I think that's all from me now. Thanks again for watching. And we'll see you again next week. Bye for now. Bye.